Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com and we'd love to talk to you about hosting your telescope under our dark sky. Today I'm going to talk about PixInsight and some things you can do to make your processing faster and more effective so you can get to the fun part in Photoshop more quickly. <music> So this is a little bit of a follow-up from a video I did a couple weeks ago where I went through my PixInsight and Photoshop workflow you know, more or less as quickly as I could. And the video wound up being about 15 minutes, but I think in terms of actual process thinking time, uh, you know, pushing the mouse around on the screen, I actually spent about five minutes working in PixInsight and about five minutes working in Photoshop. And so there's a couple things I do to make my processing in PixInsight go more quickly and that's what I want to talk about today. First of all you'll notice on the right hand side of my PixInsight screen I have some saved process icons and the way you get those is to open up a process that you want to save and for instance the first one I have here is channel combination so you could just go to process channel management channel combination and if there's any changes you want to make in the settings go ahead and make those and then use the triangle to drag that out as a process icon. And this process icon basically represents this process with these settings. Uh, and in fact, I can close this now and we still have the process icon. I can right click and choose set icon identifier to give this a different name. And then drag this over and save it somewhere. And anytime I want to use that, I just double click on it and that will open it up. And in many cases, if it's completely pre-configured, you can just drag it onto an image. But in this case, uh, we would need to configure it with the individual files that we want to combine. So you would double click to open the channel combination and then, and then execute the process. Now, once you have your process icons created like this and you don't have to do it all at once. You can build this over time like I did. If you go to File, Save Project, and I've given this a clever name of Blank Project with Process Icons. And there's a few settings that you might want to consider. For instance, I have unchecked Include Images, so I'm saving only the process icons. And then when I save that, and it's already saved so I can cancel it, when I open Picks Insight, then I can just go to File, Load Project, and load this blank project, and it will load all of the icons over here for me, just the way I had it saved. So that's kind of the first step to, to saving time. Now the next thing you can do to make it even more efficient, uh, every time I open Picks Insight, I want these icons, so I have, that's just an extra step to have to load it. What I've done, and let's close PixInsight, and if you notice on my screen, I have a shortcut. Now this shortcut is not to PixInsight, it's a shortcut to that project that we just created. And because that project is registered as a PixInsight file type, if I double click on this blank project with process icons shortcut, the operating system realizes, oh, that's a PixInsight file, I need to open PixInsight in order to load the, that project. And sure enough, we'll move our randomly placed process monitor out of the way. And we just open PixInsight with all of our process icons ready to rock and roll. So that's kind of the first two things you can do. Now, if you look at the, the items I have here, this more or less is my workflow from top to bottom. A uh, channel combination I might use for red, green, and blue to create an RGB image. Uh, dynamic background extraction is set up for both a subtraction and a division with sample points arranged around the perimeter. And typically I may have to adjust those to uh, move them away from the, you know, any, any artifacts of misalignment uh, during the imaging. Next I have Blur Exterminator, which, I'm sorry, next I have the Spectrophotometric Color Calibration. 
and I would use those on RGB images. Uh, and I have three instances of that. One is pre-configured for my color camera. Uh, the second one is pre-configured for the monochrome uh, ASI 6200. And the third one is pre-configured for the FLI 16803 monochrome camera that we have on the Dream Astrograph that's available for monthly rentals. Next I have Blur Exterminator and I have, again, I have three different sets of settings. I have one which is just the default, a second one which I've defined as aggressive, and what I've done here is turn up the sharpened stars to about 32. And that gives you a little bit tighter, a little bit sharper stars, um, and I most of the time I find I like that more aggressive setting, at least with my uh, plane wave telescope. With the Takahashi, I tend to use just the standard settings. I will sometimes make a duplicate copy of the RGB image and run the aggressive settings on one copy, and then I'll run this kind of what I call fluffy star settings on the second copy. And what that does is it adjusts the star halos to make them larger. And sometimes it's, it's more pleasing to have a little bit more of a halo around the stars uh, and in that case, then I would blend the sharp stars and the fluffy stars together in Photoshop to get you know, what I would consider the ideal blend. So you can see that there's uh, some of the thinking has already been done and saved in these process icons. Uh, I almost always do my stretch with a, uh, the screen transfer function and the histogram transformation tool. So those come next. This last block takes a little bit more discussion. Uh, I like to use Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator on my nonlinear data, and I frequently find that I want to run both of them just one after the other with the, the same settings. These are a process container. And for instance, if I double click on this first one to open it up, you'll see that it actually has two processes within it. It has Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. And in fact, the star exterminator is, it was configured to save the stars and use the unscreen method. So you can see here, save stars true, unscreen true. So I created first, I created this process icon for star exterminator. Then I created a process container that had both noise exterminator and star exterminator. Now, the way you do that is you go to process, and process container and I'll just reset this and let me clarify first this isn't the, a process container this is a tool to create process containers so first we have to use this tool to create a process container and we'll just duplicate the one we just looked at we'll drag our noise exterminator in and then we'll drag star exterminator in so now we have a process container with two processes I'll use the triangle to drag out a new instance of this. Now we have a process container. So, or at least a process container we can use. So I might give this another name, set icon identifier. Uh, and of course you can't have spaces. And then drag this over to the side where you want to save these and then and then save your your blank project with process icons with your newly created uh, process container. The beauty of that is I can start both of those processes running and they'll run in sequence without intervention. So I can go off and do other things. Now a very common situation for me is to run all three of my uh, narrowband data through the same process. So for instance, I might open up the hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, all three. So here's hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. And I'll open those three images, but I want to run the same process on each one of the three images. So this is the kind of the third piece of of efficiency and that's to use an image container. And much like a process container contains links to processes, an image container contains references to images. So if I right click on the screen 
and choose image container. And I typically do this just on, a, on an ad hoc basis, meaning I'll, I'll create an image container, use it, and then throw it away. So I want to create an image container with these three images. And I can use the add files, or I can add views. And in this case, we want to add views because they're already open. So I'll click on add views. And in fact, we want to add all three of the ones that are open. So I could either double click on each one to add it, or I can just choose select all and then OK. And now we have those three images added to our image container. Again, I'll just use the triangle to drag out a new instance. Now we have an image container that references each one of these three images. So if I want to run, for instance, if I want to run a noise exterminator on each one of these three, I'm sorry, this is Blur Exterminator. I can just take this process icon, drag it onto the image container, and that will start Blur Exterminator running on each one of these three images. Again, while I go off and check email, sip my coffee, you know, do whatever. Then I can stretch each one of the images. And stretching the image doesn't change the image. So for instance, this is this image. If I stretch the image, with my uh, screen stretch function. Now it's stretched, but it's still the same image. And it's still the same image referenced in this image container. So I can actually do uh, stretching functions on this image and still use this image container for my noise exterminator and star exterminator. So yes, you can run a process container that runs multiple processes on an image container that contains multiple images. So in fact, when I run Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator on this image container, I'm running two processes on three images. So that's kind of six individual steps, all happening automatically uh, while I go off and take a nap or do something else. And it, it typically takes about you know, two or three minutes for that to run on, on my computer with these size images. So those are some things you can do to really speed up your process in PixInsight. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make it process faster, uh, but it saves me time because I can go off and do other things without having you know, every 15 or 30 seconds to click on another icon. And most of my steps in PixInsight are done without really any creative thinking. Uh, I'm just going through the motions, uh, turn the crank, do the processes, and generate the TIFF files that I'm then going to load into Photoshop. And Photoshop is where I make the creative decisions. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, be sure to drop those in the comments down below. Uh, if you like videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, most of my videos are more about Photoshop than PixInsight. And I do that because there are lots of videos about PixInsight. There are fewer about Photoshop and the way I use it to create my images. So drop any questions down below. And if, you have, if you're interested in hosting or some telescope rental, uh, you can contact us through our website at utahdesertremote.com. And for now, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks. Mm -hmm.